Swift's classes can optionally be given a deinitializer function, which is a bit like the opposite of an initializer in that it's called when an object's destroyed rather than when it's created. This comes with a few small provisos. First up, just like initializers, you don't use func with the initializer. They're special. Second up, the initializers never take parameters and never return data. And in fact, they aren't even written with parentheses because they're never having parameters. Third up, it'll be automatically called when the last copy of a class instance is destroyed. That might mean, for example, it was made inside a function that's now finishing. Fourth, we never call deinitializers directly. The system calls them for us as needed. And finally, structs do not have deinitializers because you can't copy them. They're always unique. Now, exactly when your deinitializer is called depends on what you're doing. But really, it comes down to a concept called scope. Scope more or less means the context where information is available. And you've seen various examples already. Things like if you make a variable inside a function, that's a scope. If you create a variable inside a condition, that's a scope. If you have a variable inside the loop, that's a scope. If you try and access the variables outside the function or outside the condition or outside the loop, you can't. It's not possible. Now, if you look at the big picture, you'll see that each of these things start and end their scope with braces. Functions, conditions, loops, all create local scopes. We can put variables and constants if we want to. Now, when a variable exits scope, we mean the context in which it was made is going away. The function's ending, the condition's ending, the loop is ending, whatever. In the case of structs, that means the data's being destroyed. But in the case of classes, it means only one copy of the data has been destroyed, the one that was in there, because there might still be copies elsewhere. But when the final copy is destroyed, when there are no more copies, when all constants and variables point to that part of data have been destroyed, then the underlying data is also destroyed. And the memory it was using is returned back to the system. To show this off, we could create a class that prints a message when it's created, initializer, and destroyed, deinitializer. Looks like this. There's a class in it, id int, print I'm alive, and then d in it, print user id I'm dead. And remember, there are no parentheses with the deinitializer. It cannot ever take parameters. And now we can try creating and destroying instances of this type in a loop, for example. So go to next code over here. If we create a user inside the loop, it'll be destroyed when the loop ends, when that iteration finishes. And look at the next iteration. We say something like uh, uh, for i in one through three, let user equals a user with the ID of i. And we'll do print uh, user, user.id, I'm in control. Let's run that code back. Boom. So you can see user one, I'm alive, I'm in control, I'm dead. User two, I'm alive, I'm in control, I'm dead. User three, alive, in control, dead. Each one is created individually, has some time, and then destroyed fully before another one's even created. As soon as the current loop iteration ends, bang, destroyed, next one's made and it carries on. Now remember, the deinitializer happens only when the last remaining reference to that class instance is destroyed. This might be a variable or constant you have stashed away, or perhaps you had it stored away in something like a, a set or a dictionary or an array or whatever. For example, if we added all our user instances to an array as we were created, they'd only be destroyed when the array is cleared. For example, if I had var users equals an array of user before our loop, then in our loop, add simply users.append user. And now, at the end, after the loop, I'll do print loop is finished, users.remove all, and then print 
array is clear. Let's run it again and see what happens now. So you can see alive in control. Two, I'm alive in control. Three, I'm alive in control. They're not being destroyed anymore. But then loop is finished. User one, I'm dead. User two, I'm dead. User three, I'm dead. And array is clear. So they stay alive because they are being stored in the array. Even though the constant they're made into here is destroyed as the loop iteration finishes, another reference was alive inside the array. And only when the array is also cleared, that they finally are destroyed.